Welcome to the Yankee Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel. For the third week, we're coming to you from Ragged Mountain Resort here in Danbury, New Hampshire. Looking for some great skiing in your own backyard with a vertical drop of 1,250 feet, 244 skiable acres, 55 trails, three terrain parks, and seven lifts. Make sure you've got Ragged Mountain Resort on your radar this winter. Today, we're back here to meet with groomer per excellence, Al Wickstrom, and hear about their work making the snow surfaces the best they can be. Carly Bascom from the New England Healing Sports Association will give us a highlight of their 50th anniversary celebration. Jean Connolly of the Center for the Arts will join us to tell us about what they're doing to complete their mission in spite of the COVID hiccups. And we'll close with an interview we did last year with Ali Coy with a few Valentine's gift suggestions at Ali Oops in New London. Don't go away because you won't want to miss this week's edition of the Yankee Chronicle. Even though our daily lives are different, one fact remains unchanged. Blood is needed every day by patients facing a range of serious illnesses. If you're healthy, please schedule an appointment to donate by visiting redcrossblood.org. Some say e-cigarettes aren't dangerous. But science shows nicotine can harm teens' developing brains. No matter how they're exposed. Let's do an experiment to find out. Here's a teen who won't be using e-cigarettes. Now we need one willing to risk their brain development. Care to volunteer your kid? We all know ticks suck blood, but even a tiny tick can make you super sick. When you're outdoors, wear protective clothing and an EPA-registered insect repellent. And remember to check for ticks everywhere. Go to ticksuck.org for more information. Ticksuck.org. Welcome back to Inky Chronicle. I'm your host, Abby Peel, coming to you from Ragged Mountain Resort in Danbury, New Hampshire. It's always fun to visit this time of year. And I'm now joined by Al Wickstrom, the Mountain Operations Manager, who knows a little bit about the snow conditions out there. Hi, Al. Hi, how are you? Thanks for uh, always hosting us every winter. It's so fun to be here. Tell us about how the season's going. We're post-holiday. How are the conditions out there? Conditions right now are pretty good. Um, we have had some wet um, weather in December that has made it a little difficult to keep the ball rolling fast as they'd like. Yes. But uh, what we do have to offer out there is pretty quality. It looks it. We're sitting right here looking up this slope right here and not only do you have a lot of people on it but I still see some corduroy and it looks like there's some nice powder going so the conditions are good and people should come out and enjoy them. That's right. And tell us a little bit about your job as a whole. I think this is a very fascinating position at a mountain. So what are you in charge of as mountain operations manager? Mountain operations is essentially everything that's outside that way. Okay. Um, lifts, snowmaking, grooming, vehicle maintenance, ski patrol are kind of the, the, the uh, meat and potatoes of wow. mountain operations. Um, lifts is uh, very intricate, obviously. Sure. There's quite a bit of responsibility to keep the lifts turning, people hanging from the sky all the time. Right. Um, snow, <laughs> snow making and making that snow, obviously a year like this where right. we haven't had a lot of natural snow, hopefully that'll turn around. For sure. um, but yeah, knowing uh, when to make snow and when not to make snow and how much to make and where and to manage that surface after it's all pushed out, grooming and then making sure that those groomers go and that they definitely break just like anything else. Sure. And so then there's a lot of par parts that come to your job too when unexpected things happen I'm sure I think the grooming aspect of uh, mountains is so fascinating so there's a lot that has to do with obviously mother nature and mm -hmm. a, a certain go time and then I'm sure there's a little bit of trying to decide is it right to make snow right now should you do it at night versus the morning walk us through that process well the snow really is is, is completely based on temperature and what we use wet bulb which is a, a, a relative humidity and real temperature uh, or air temperature combination and that wet bulb temperature will tell us in a forecast usually when we're going to make snow uh, how we're going to run where we're going to run what we're going to flow for water all of that the grooming part of it um, outside of pushing snow uh, essentially the, the race trails, some things that you want to be a little more firmer in the morning. Right. You know, those will get groomed a little earlier in the shift. Hmm. Um, the trails, like your beginner area and things that you want a little bit softer, we groom those a little bit closer to opening. 
Interesting. And so there are ever times that you think, okay, two days from now we'll be good to, to make snow, and then Mother Nature throws a curveball, and all of a sudden you can't make snow. Uh, usually we can have a pretty good idea, uh, you know, a day or two out, what exactly we're going to do with snowmaking. Um, the weather is a game, and as you can see, the forecast a lot of times will actually get warmer, and the snow amounts will get less the closer you get to that long-term forecast, which is a game that we're used to playing here. Um, but uh, yeah, usually we have a pretty good idea where we're going to make snow, how much we're going to flow, um, how much we're going to run and how much we're going to make. Interesting. Um, the hard part is being able to have a consistent schedule of making snow, not making snow, not making snow for a while, and then making snow for a while, and things right. like that. So snowmaking can be a bit inconsistent. It sounds it. And then grooming, I think, is very fascinating, too. Your groomers are starting at the end of the day and potentially going all night and then again in the morning? Essentially, yeah. We have groomers that go out right after we close, and then we have groomers that are going out mid-shift or early in the morning um, to do essentially what we talked about with the beginner areas right. of what else needs to be done in order to be open for that day because you want that good corduroy that's right that's my kind of skiing well really interesting to hear all about just the snow making here and all the operations that you're in charge of there's a lot that's going on here uh this is a great season anything else you're looking forward to this this season at ragged more snow the forecast right now <laughs> looks like it's actually pretty good yep. um that's not always a guarantee but sure. um hopefully we have some of our natural terrain open in the near future that'll make us real happy definitely and going into school vacations i'm sure is always a crucial time you want this place uh with lots and lots of snow that brings a lot of skiers and riders. That's right. Alan Wickstrom, thanks so much for being here. It's so interesting to hear about your job. Thank you. Lots going on here at Ragged. Don't let the season slip away without a visit to this family skiing jewel in Danbury and learn for yourself why they have such a great reputation for surface quality. When we come back, Carly Bascom will join us to tell us about the 50th anniversary of the New England Healing Sports Association. But first, these words from the good folks that make our show possible. We all know ticks suck blood, but not just in the woods. Ticks can be almost anywhere year round. Even though some are smaller than the head of a pin, they're big trouble. Even a tiny tick can make you super sick. So wear protective clothing and an EPA registered insect repellent. And when you shower, remember, check for ticks everywhere. If you get a tick, tell an adult and go to ticksuck.org to learn how to remove it properly. Ticks suck, but being outdoors shouldn't. Ticksuck.org. I'm Ryan Seacrest. First responders are people who stand for a greater purpose. When you call 911 and ask for help, first responders show up now. Let's show up for the people who show up for us every day and every night. The annual meeting and deliberative session for the Kearsarge Regional School District will be held on Saturday, January 8, 2022 at 9 a.m in the Kearsarge Regional High School Auditorium located on North Road in North Sutton, New Hampshire. Inclement weather date is January 15th. Voting will take place on Tuesday, March 8th in each of the district communities. The WARN articles are available on the district website. Please come and participate. Welcome back to Yankee Chronicle. Today we're being hosted by Ragged Mountain Resort here in Danbury, New Hampshire. Skiing is for everyone. With that in mind, let's hear about the 50th anniversary of a local organization that pioneered the ski door opening to those that might have never tried. Hi, Carly. Nessa began first in the year 1972. We started by a group of Vietnam War era veterans that were returning from war and they really were just interested in getting back to the sport that they loved, which was skiing. Uh, so they kind of banded together as a group and taught each other how to ski again. And over the years, we have certainly evolved as an organization. Initially, we served only veterans, then we evolved to serving veterans and individuals with physical disabilities, and then in the 90s we started serving individuals with cognitive disabilities. Originally, Nessa was called New England Handicapped Sportsmen's Association, and over the years our name, although it's still the acronym Nessa, we've evolved to better serve folks not only what hap with what happens here at the mountain or in their sports uh, out on the water or on the hike, but also to include the healing that happens 
outside of our programs and back in their homes or in their social lives. But we feel that healing is, is a more empowering term for the athletes that come here to Nessa. Now today we serve anybody with any disability. As long as they have a willingness to get outside and enjoy, enjoy sports and recreation with us, we would love to see them all year long. Well, adaptive skiing has evolved quite a bit in the last 50 years. It's also evolved as the sport of skiing has evolved. You know, we, we went from cable bindings to now what we have today. And adaptive skiing is not different than that. A lot of the adaptations that were first created were really just kind of handmade things, wooden pegs sometimes for, um, for ski legs. And today we have some really, really nice equipment that has kind of taken over the industry. I'm actually standing next to a piece of equipment here that is newer to us at Nessa. It's a ski bike and it's a way for folks that maybe have some balance issues. Maybe they have, again, a, a leg amputation or weakness on one side. It's a way for fo folks to get out on the hill. It's just different. Uh, you all have seen, if you followed Nessa along, you've seen sit skis. This is a different version of sitting down and skiing. And we're really excited to, to bring it to Mount Sunapee. We're excited to have it on the hill. So if you come to Mount Sunapee, take a look at this. Be watching out for it on the hill. It's an awesome piece of equipment. And the learning curve is very fast. Easy to learn, easy to maneuver, and we've got the folks that can teach you how to do it. Nessa is really fortunate that we are able to provide year-round adaptive sports programming to folks with disabilities. Not only in the winter do we provide skiing and snowboarding and ski biking, but we also just recently received a grant to now provide snowshoeing in the winter. In the warmer months, we also provide kayaking, paddleboarding, and again, just recently, we got a hiking grant to supply a fully accessible hiking program so folks can get out on the mountains hiking with us and our Nessa friends. Nessa runs almost solely on volunteers. We do have four paid staff members here at Nessa, but we have about 300 active volunteers year-round within our programs, and we're always recruiting more. We have lots of training that goes on for each season, but we also have training throughout the year for our kayak and paddleboarding program as well as our hiking program. There's all different kinds of opportunities to volunteer with us, and like I said, we're always looking for more volunteers. So if you or somebody that you know is interested in joining us outside and um, hanging out with some pretty cool people, then please feel free to give us a call. Maybe outdoors isn't really your thing. We have a ton of different volunteer opportunities that can take place indoors. For example, we run a lot of fundraisers throughout the year. We're always looking for help chairing those fundraisers through our volunteer network. We also have our own rental ski shop here at the Nessa Lodge, so we're always looking for more shop technicians to help during the winter. And we also have several office volunteers that come in and they help us file and do ad administrative work. So there's tons of opportunities to, to take place indoors. If maybe outdoors just isn't your thing, we would love to have you. We're very fortunate to have so much community support from local organizations here at Sunapee, but also from individual donors. Donations are, are huge for us, and so if maybe you feel compelled to donate to our organization and to our cause, we would love, love, love your support. You can donate to us by going to our website and hitting the Donate Now button, or you can just give us a call at the office and we can walk you through the process. We very much appreciate the support from our community. If any of this has piqued your interest, then please head to our website, www.nessa.org. You can find out more information about volunteering. You can find out about how to register as an athlete, uh, donation opportunities, fundraising opportunities. Head to our website, and if you have more questions, just give us a call. Thanks, Carly. As their work expands, they're always looking for extra hands. If you are looking for something to do, when we return, Jean Connolly will tell us about the Center for the Arts in the Sunapee region. 
Let's first take a break for a few words from the businesses that make our show successful. It can only continue if you buy local. For children fighting critical illness, we can make the stars align. Because when we come together, hope and joy will shine. Help us make every wish come true. We all come together and stand together to serve our veterans. We invest in the latest technology. We take the time to train the next generation of doctors and nurses. We work together to make sure we heal their bodies and their minds. This is our mission. More than 300,000 of us working as one, together with families and loved ones. No matter where they live in this country, we'll be there. We stand strong, united. Stand with us in caring for our veterans. Welcome back to Inky Chronicle. I'm Abby Peel, your host today, coming to you from Ragged Mountain Ski Resort in Danbury, a ski destination that has something for everyone in the family. Now let's hear about how the Center for the Arts are meeting their COVID challenges. Hi, Jean. Thanks, Abby. Yes, we have a lot coming up in February, starting with February 4th, our first Friday for the month is a gallery stroll. And we have a special members show, the Center for the Arts members show at the New London Inn, as well as Bar Harbor Bank and Trust, both on Main Street. This is an annual event, it's a juried show. We have some tremendous artists, so it will be a wonderful, wonderful exhibit to see. In addition, that same night will be uh, a continuation of the exhibit of Penny Koberger's artwork at Boone Bakery Gallery and uh, the art at Tatewell Gallery on Newport Road. And this year, we're very excited to be including Prospect Hill Gallery in Sunapee. So for those folks that are over in the Sunapee area who don't want to get through the snow and come over to New London, please stop in at Prospect Hill. The artwork there is superb. And this month, we are, have an additional uh, exciting event. We are collaborating with Colby Sawyer College at the Davidow Art Center for Art and Design is of Richard Haynes, who's an outstanding contemporary artist from the seacoast. He teaches at UNH and he's a tremendous storyteller. Uh, his, his visual uh, interpretation of the history of the, um, of the United States and of the African American plight in the United States is absolutely fabulous. He will be there to meet our guests that evening and all of these wonderful openings are from five o'clock to seven o'clock again on February 4th, so don't miss it. Again, in February, we also have an exciting new series of events starting called Tapestry Tuesdays. And on February 15th, uh, we will have Rebecca Rule, who's a tremendous storyteller. She's been gathering stories for 20 years. She's been the host of several PBS uh, shows, and she'll be here at the New London Inn to uh, grace us with these humorous stories and uh, meet those of you who uh, can attend. The New London Inn is partnering with us on these Tapestry Tuesdays. All events are here at the Inn. It's on the third Tuesday of each month, for at, beginning at 5.30. And the uh, New London Inn and Coach House Restaurant is preparing a special menu for our Tapestry Tuesdays. So this will be a nice, cozy, intimate affair. Uh, listen to some wonderful stories, get a drink, have some appetizers that are specially made for this evening. This will continue every month. Our Tapestry Tuesday series will be on the third Tuesday of each month here at the New London Inn beginning at 5.30. It's an assortment of authors, poets, uh, photographers, artists, uh, historical uh, interpretations, um, interesting facts about New Hampshire, just a variety, a tapestry of uh, different uh, topics that will be brought to you in this very cozy and intimate setting at the New London Inn. Coming up later in the year will be uh, Charlie Freiberg talking about the hidden treasures of the rail trail 
and a special uh, workshop on cell phone photography. If you've ever wondered, you know, how do I take great photos on my cell phone and then what do I do with them afterwards? How do I edit them? This is an opportunity for that. The cell phone um, event is in March and Charlie Freiberg will be here in April. And as you know, we have First Fridays every month, Tapestry Tuesdays every month, and coming up in the summer, a couple of fabulous art shows, which will be in Sunapee Harbor, Naturally New England, and Arts in the Harbor this year, as well as a return of our big swing gala. It's Let's Swing Again this summer. It will be at Dexter's on August 17th, so please save the date and join us. Unfortunately, in January, we had to cancel several events due to COVID, but those events will be scheduled again later in the year. And for the up-to-date information about all of our events, whether they're uh, postponed, canceled, or hopefully happening live, please check our website or give us a call, and we'll be happy to uh, inform you what is happening that week. Thanks, Jean. Check out their website for the latest on events, rescheduling, and cancellations. When we come back, we'll revisit a piece that we did last year on Valentine gifts ideas at Alley Oops. But first, let's visit a few of our community-minded business that, in spite of COVID, are still here serving you. Every year, thousands of animals are killed by poachers. You can protect them. Join us. At Wounded Warrior Project, while we all deal with the effects of COVID-19, our greatest concern is for the health and safety of our nation's wounded heroes, especially those who are at increased risk due to their service to our nation and those who are even now more isolated. We are connecting with warriors and families by adapting our free life-changing programs, including increased phone and video support and online services. The need has never been greater and we've never been more committed. Please support warriors today. Welcome back to our show. We're coming to you from the finely groomed trails of Ragged Mountain Resort in Danbury, New Hampshire. Last year, we visited Alley Oops for some Valentine gift ideas. What do you have for us, Allie? Thank you, Abby, and thanks for visiting us today here at Alley Oops Flowers and Gifts here in New London. Um, this year's Valentine's Day is going to look a little bit different. Last year, we just barely missed the whole COVID um, scenario that was happening, and we were able to have a very busy holiday. And this year, we are gearing up for another busy holiday. Every holiday in the last year has been twice as busy, so we're hoping the same thing for Valentine's Day. This year we can offer you um, a bunch of different things because we will not be open to the public in our store because the health of our community and our staff is the most important to us. So you will be able to come up to the front door and get um, grab and go things as well as stuff pre-ordered on our website. Uh, a couple things that we have this year is grab and go boxes. We have a uh, Be Mine box. And this year we have a Lucky in Love box. It's $55 and it comes with locally made soaps, candies, and a mini orchid, as well as a locally made card that we'll be happy to hand write for you. We also have a Be Mine box that has all the Beeline products that are made in Henniker, New Hampshire, as well as some fun chocolate covered pretzels and a hand painted card. Another thing is since a lot of people will be staying in this year for Valentine's Day instead of going out, we made a quarantine arrangement this year that comes with a candle it's a centerpiece so the two of you can just sit and have a nice Valentine's Day and get takeout from one of our local restaurants that we all love so much
So that is just a bunch of all of our fun choices that we have available. Just head on over to our website at alibs.com. We're located right here on Main Street in New London. And we do year round, we do weddings, we do parties, all of the above. So we're gearing up for a really busy season. So that's just a sampling of what we have to offer on our website at alibs.com. and I'm um, happy to help everyone in our local community and every, anything you need related to flowers. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, Allie. Don't wait until the last minute to get that special someone, something that shows your appreciation. I'd like to thank our host location for this month, Ragged Mountain Resort. If you've never skied before or are unsure if you would enjoy it, the BB Wood program is the perfect way for you to try it out Monday through Thursday without any risk to your wallet. Head over to the BB Wood program homepage on the Ragged Mountain website to learn more. With February vacation just around the corner, make sure you get to Ragged Mountain Resort and enjoy this great season of skiing and boarding. Next week, we'll close our visit here at Ragged Mountain Resort. Don't miss our live Game of the Week at YCNnow.com. While we wait for tournament time, watch replays of our games at 12 noon and 5.30 p.m. on Sunday and Monday on WYCX TV. This week, we replay the Hartford Girls hosting Woodstock. Watch any of our games on demand anytime at YCNnow.com. Other programming on outside television includes original shows featuring the most exciting extreme sports from rock climbing, biking, water sports, and of course, skiing. I'm Abby Peel. Join me again next week as we meet here at Ragged Mountain Resort at the same time for another Yankee Chronicle.